This is a medium difficulty GMAT problem solving question. I'll classify this question as the GMAT 650 level question. The sample question is from the topic inequalities. If x is an integer, which of the following inequalities have a finite range of values of x satisfying them? Two keywords in this question. The first one that x is an integer. The second one we need to compute for which of these four inequalities will the range of values be finite. It's not something which is infinite. You can say there are 10 values that will satisfy them, 8 values that can satisfy them. It could be 104 values too, but it should be a finite range of values. So for which of these inequalities will the solution be finite in number? Let's come to that when we solve the question. What is the importance of this first keyword, which is integer? I'm going to ask you a very simple innocuous question. Think of a number between 1 and 10. What number did you think? Quite often, we are used to thinking in a particular way that you would have thought about 2, 7, 3, 5. The trap is we are conditioned to thinking of numbers in terms of integers. We do not consider non-integers at all when someone asks us to think about a number. You would have thought about, let's say for example, between a 2 and a 4. If I ask you to think of a number, you are likely to say the only number between 2 and 4 is a 3. But that's not true. There are non-integers between 2 and 4. It could be a 3.14, it could be a 2.07, it could be a 2.73. First and foremost, leaving what is given in this question, get used to thinking of numbers in terms of non-integers, not just only integers. There are infinite numbers between any two integers. You will have to address this trap if you have to get past a lot of the data sufficiency questions. As far as this question goes, because the question explicitly states that x is an integer. If I ask you or if I told you that x lies between 2 and 4, for this question, the only value of x that will satisfy will be a 3. If this integer condition is not mentioned, then if x takes values from 2 to 4 or lies between 2 and 4, then there are infinite values. It could take a 2.17, it can take a 3.14, it can take a 3.73, it can also be a 3. For us, x is an integer. So if x lies between 2 and 4, then there is only one value, which is x equals 3. With this introduction, let's get started. We have four answer options given. Two are quadratic expression. One is a number within modulus absolute value. And one is a linear inequality. The approach is we are going to be finding out the solution set to each of these things and figure out whether the solution set is finite or infinite. Start with the first one, so quadratic expression. At the end of solving this question, we'll have a couple of takeaways as to how to find out solution sets to quadratic expressions. Solving a quadratic expression, especially when it comes to inequalities, should take us probably 20 seconds per quadratic expression. The time it takes for us to actually factorize it. In all, in the real examination, for solving this question with four inequalities should take us not more than a minute and a half. Let's get started. How do you solve this quadratic expression? Factorize the expression. x square plus 5x plus 6 is greater than 0. Factorize this as x square plus 2x plus 3x plus 6 is greater than 0. Sum is equal to 5x. Product is equal to the product of the first and the last term, which is 6x square. So it's essentially factorize as x plus 2 times x plus 3 is greater than 0. I'm not going to go about the textbook way. I'm going to give you a key result. If you have an expression of the form x minus a times x minus b is greater than 0, if the inequality is a greater than inequality and you've got the expression on the left hand side to resemble x minus a times x minus b, then x will not, x will not lie between a and b. It is not going to lie between a and b. Keep this in mind. So if you rewrite this expression to resemble this form, this is going to be x minus of minus 2 times x minus of minus 3 is greater than 0. So what are a and b for us? Minus 3 and minus 2. So x is not going to lie between minus 3 and minus 2. This is a key result which you have to keep in mind. If you know this result, solving quadratic expressions is going to take you 20 seconds. Otherwise, the textbook approach is going to take you a minute or so to get there. We don't want to invest that kind of time in a question of this kind. It's a medium difficulty question. You cannot take more than one and a half minutes. So if x does not lie between, x does not lie between minus 3 and minus 2. Look at the number line. This is a minus 3. This is a minus 2. We are saying it does not lie between minus 3 and minus 2. So where can it lie? It can lie at a number range which is less than minus 3 or a value which is greater than minus 2. Less than minus 3, how low can it go? It can go all the way up to minus infinity. Greater than minus 2, 
how far can it go? It can go all the way up to plus infinity. So these are the values which of x which will satisfy this inequality. Is the range of values of x that satisfy this inequality, even when x is an integer, is it finite or infinite? We are going all the way up to minus infinity and all the way up to plus infinity, which means that this is not a finite range of values. We have infinite values of x that will satisfy it despite x being an integer. So the first one, the answer option is, is not the correct one. This has got, does not have a finite range of values. It's got an infinite range of values that satisfies it. Quickly summarize it in a printed form. Factorized it as x plus 2 into x plus 3 is greater than 0. This factorization you should be able to do in 10 seconds. This is a key result. The key result is if you can write an expression of the form x minus a times x minus b is greater than 0. The inequality should be a greater than 0. Then x will not lie between the two roots a and b. In our case, we can write it as x minus of minus 2 times x minus of minus 3 is greater than 0, which means that x is not going to lie between minus 3 and minus 2. If it's not going to lie between minus 3 and minus 2, it's either less than minus 3 or it is greater than minus 2. In either case, the range is infinite. So A is not, option A is not an answer. Let's move on to option B. This one is an absolute value, modulus 1. Again, let's find out the solution. There are two possibilities for modulus. The expression within this modulus symbol could either be positive or could be negative. So for the first option, when we take it to be positive, we're going to get an answer option, which is x plus 2 is greater than 4. Translates to x is greater than 2. Right? You don't even have to process beyond this. There is one more range of value which will work. But you realize that x is greater than 2, it's going to go up to infinity. But nevertheless, let's solve it fully and check out what we get. The second possibility is, if this is negative, then x plus 2 is going to be less than minus 4. Take the plus 2 to the right hand side, you're going to get an answer, which is x is less than minus 6. So either x is going to be greater than 2 or x is going to be less than minus 6. So solution set to this, the solution set is x less than minus 6 union x greater than 2. Let's draw the number line to check out whether it's finite or infinite. If it is less than minus 6, it starts from minus 6 and goes all the way down to minus infinity. So infinite values of x, despite x being an integer, will satisfy it. Similarly, if x is greater than 2, starting from 2, it can go all the way up to infinity. Here again, we have infinite values of x that are going to satisfy it. So solution set to the second option also is an infinite range of values of x. So choice B is also not the answer. So quickly you can eliminate answer option E as well because E says B and D. So it's either C or D, one of the two which should have a finite range of values. Quickly run through this in a printed form, solving this inequality. First possibility is when this is positive and the expression is positive, gives a value that x is greater than 2. The second one is if it is negative, x plus 2 is less than minus 4. Translates to x is less than minus 6. x is less than minus 6 or x is greater than 2. In either case, we are talking about infinite range of values. Choice B is not the answer. Let's move on to the third one. This one is a simple linear inequality. Take 3x to the left hand side that leaves us with 6x is less than, take the minus 7 to the right hand side, that's going to be 21. So 6x is less than 21 or x is less than 21 upon 6, which is nothing but a 3.5. So x is less than 3.5. x is less than 3.5. Use the number line. 3.5 is here. x takes values which are less than 3.5. All integer values less than 3.5. How low can it go? It can go all the way up to minus infinity. So do we have a finite range of value? Again, no. In this case, again, we have an infinite range of values of x that will satisfy it. So choice C is also not the answer. So you don't even have to probably check. Choice D has to be the answer, but let's take a look at it. D basically states that x square minus 4x plus 3 is less than 0. Again, a quadratic expression. Factorize this expression. It's going to factorize as x square minus x minus 3x plus 3 is less than 0. Sum is equal to minus 4x. Product is plus 3x square, which is a product of the first and the last term. So it'll factorize as x minus 1 times x minus 3. This is less than 0. Remember the first quadratic expression? The result that we had is, if it is of the form x minus a times x minus b is greater than 0. What is the form that this has? x minus a times x minus b is less than 0. If the inequality is a less than inequality. And the left hand side expression, after factorizing the quadratic expression, translates to a form of x minus a times x minus b. Then x is going to lie between a and b. In this case, the assumption is a is lesser than b. If b is lesser than a, it will be b less than x less than a. So essentially, x lies between a and b. Does this resemble this key result form? 
yes x minus 1 times x minus 3 is less than 0 so solution set to this is x will lie between 1 and 3 the result that I gave you for the first quadratic expression and the one that I am giving you for the fourth one keep these two handy these will help you actually solve any quadratic expression in less than 20 seconds so if x lies between 1 and 3 and x is an integer how many values of x will satisfy it only one value of x that x is equal to 2 is the only value that will satisfy it so does this particular inequality have a finite range of values yes so choice d is the answer quickly summarize it in a printed form and have the two key results taken away we are factorizing it we got x minus 3 times x minus 1 is less than 0 key result is we have x minus a times x minus b is less than 0 then x lies between a and b the key thing to remember is the inequality should be a less than symbol after having written it as x minus a times x minus b if it's going to lie between a and b what are a and b for us 1 and 3 so the solution set to this is x lies between 1 and 3 if it's an integer the only value that it can take is x is equal to 2 so choice d is the answer as i mentioned remember these two key takeaways one a quadratic expression of the form ax square plus bx plus c is less than zero and keep this very important thing in mind the coefficient of x square which is a should be positive in both the examples we started with x square plus 5x x square minus 4x so a was 1 which was greater than 0 so I did not bother to explain it there but keep this in mind the coefficient of x square should be positive for a quadratic expression of this form if the inequality sign is less than then it will have a finite solution of x if x is an integer if it is of the form a x square plus b x plus c is greater than 0 where the coefficient of x square is positive if the inequality is a greater than 1 irrespective of whether x is an integer or not not an integer you'll have an infinite range of values of x that will satisfy it here again it's going to be finite only if x is an integer keep that also in mind best wishes for your gmat preparation stay healthy stay safe and stay motivated